Tuesday, May 4, welcome to CGN News. Jamaica has informed Trinidad and Tobago of plans to restrict travel from the Twin Island following a spike in coronavirus cases and the discovery of the Brazilian variant there. Trinidad's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley made the disclosure during a press conference on Monday announcing new restrictions aimed at combating the spread of COVID-19. Trinidad has recorded 11,471 positive cases and 179 deaths since the first case was diagnosed there in March last year. Epidemiologist Dr. Avery Hines on Monday warned that based on an alarming rate of new cases, the country could see its parallel healthcare system reach maximum capacity in 7 to 10 days. Against that backdrop, Rowley, the current CARICOM chairman, revealed that Jamaica's Prime Minister had paid him the courtesy of informing him on Sunday of the planned travel ban. Prime Minister Gaston Brown has warned of the possibility of implementing a mandatory vaccination program in Antigua and Barbuda. Brown said on his weekend radio program that the pandemic has had a tremendous impact on the socio-economic development of the island since the first case was diagnosed last March. He said that he was also disappointed that those who are aspiring to become leaders in the country are urging persons not to take the vaccine in a bid to make his administration look bad. Brown said the recent decision by the United States to issue a level four travel advisory has already started to be felt with students from an offshore medical school questioning the level of illness on the island. St. Vincent has ordered 50,000 doses of the Russia-developed Sputnik V COVID-19 vaccine as nationals continue to refuse to take the Oxford AstraZeneca shot. Thousands of doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine are at risk of expiring month end and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez says he intends to donate them to other Caribbean countries. He said that the chief medical officer told him that people are requesting the Russian vaccine which he, the CMO and other senior officials have taken in the past. Gonzalez said there is, however, an element of the contract that the CMO has to clarify with the Russian authorities before the deal can be finalized. Venezuela will begin clinical trials of the Cuban coronavirus vaccine candidate Abdallah this month, Health Minister Carlos Alvarado said on Monday. Cuba plans to produce enough doses locally to vaccinate 4 million people. In March, the island approved late-stage trials of Abdallah, named after a poem by the 19th century Cuban independence hero, Jose Marti. The trials are to be completed in July and the first results published in August, according to Cuban state media. Alvarado spoke at Venezuela's main airport in Caracas, where he announced the arrival of another 50,000 Russian Sputnik V vaccines. He said the nation has now received a total of 1.48 million coronavirus vaccine doses. The EU Commission has recommended easing restrictions on non-essential travel from overseas. Under the plans, anyone who has received the last dose of an EU-approved vaccine at least two weeks prior will be allowed to travel. The EU currently only allows non-essential travel from seven countries. But the proposals will also contain an emergency break allowing member states to limit travel quickly in response to new variants or a deteriorating health situation in non-EU countries. This would be reviewed every two weeks. Discussions on the plans will begin today. The United States set another record for the number of air travelers since the pandemic set in, although passenger numbers remain far below 2019 levels. Nearly 1.67 million people were screened at U.S. airport checkpoints on Sunday, according to the Transportation Security Administration. This was the highest number screened since March 12 of last year, when air travel began to plummet. However, it was still 35% below the number of airport travelers reported on the comparable Sunday in 2019 TSA figures reveal. Airlines started to see an increase in bookings around mid-February, and the TSA has screened at least 1 million people every day since March 11. After nearly three decades of marriage, Bill and Melinda Gates announced their decision to divorce. The couple's separation will impact not only their Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but also their fortune. 
Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates is the fourth richest person in the world and is worth $124 billion, according to Forbes. He and his wife have become philanthropic leaders, donating much of that fortune to their foundation. The pair has become influential in combating COVID-19 and running various massive public health initiatives. The Gates shared further insights into their decision to separate on Twitter. Quote, after a great deal of thought and a lot of work on our relationship, we have made the decision to end our marriage, end quote, the couple wrote. Indian authorities in Delhi have called for help from the army as the city grapples with a brutal second wave of COVID-19 cases. The government wants the army to operate COVID-19 care facilities and intensive care units. Hospitals in the city are in crisis with intensive care beds full and an acute shortage of medical oxygen. Delhi Chief Minister has repeatedly said the city is not getting enough oxygen from the federal government, which allocates oxygen quotas to states. But federal officials deny there are shortages, saying the challenge has come from transportation. India has recorded close to 20 million cases since the start of the outbreak. And finally, the Canadian town of Listowel has been embroiled in a war of words via business signs that has captivated local residents and people around the world. It started as a battle between two businesses in the Ontario town, Speedy Glass and Dairy Queen, and has since spread to the entire town and even further afield. Locals have been joining in, creating fun mottos for their businesses. Trevor Cork, owner of Speedy Glass, told the BBC that he decided to challenge DQ to a sign war after seeing a similar attempt in Virginia that had gone viral. Quark said the sign war was a, quote, perfect distraction to what's happening in the world around us right now, end quote, and had brought together the town, which has a population of just over 7,500 people. That's it for CGN News. I'm Scott Wilson. Thanks for watching.